Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going through several topics of the descriptive statistics. So things like mean, median, standard deviations, how to find outliers, and a little bit more. Before we start, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as it, it is the best way to support me and my desire to bring high quality, easy to consume tutorials to you at no cost. Okay, so in this question it says to consider the following sample and you're given 10 sample points. So we don't have any context, but I mean, you can assume that this is, uh, you know, this could be the age of 10 people that we surveyed. First question is what is the mean? And the mean is just the average. So to find the mean, or the sample mean, so X bar, all you need to do is add up all the values. So we're gonna add up all the X values. These are the X values and divide it by the sample size. So if you were to add all of these up, and divide it by 10, you would have your average. So, so if you do add them up, you should get 345. So 345 divided by 10 is 34.5. So that is our sample mean or sample average. Next, we've asked you for the median. So the few, so there are a few ways to do this. First of all, you can eyeball it. We have 10 values. So where would be the perfect division to split the sample into two equal parts? Well, it, that would be right in the middle. So we know that the median is between 22 and 23. So the exact midpoint between 22 and 23 is 22.5. You could find that by just adding them up and dividing by two. That would be the easiest way to find the median for any sample. Next, we've asked you for the variance. Now, the best way to find the sample variance, which we call S squared, is by taking the sum of X squared minus the sum of X bracket squared over N, and then dividing all of that by N minus one. If you divide by N minus one when you're looking for the sample variance, now had this been the population, we would only be dividing by N. So the first step would be sum of x squared. So for this one, you have to square each x value and then add up those squares. So that means squaring each one, like I'm doing here, and adding them up and so on. And if you do that, you should get 17,441 minus the sum, which we had from before, 345. We'll square that divide that by 10, and then divide the entire thing by 9, 10 minus 1. And this should give you 615.38 repeating. And this is the sample variance. For the standard deviation, you're simply going to square root the variance. So the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the square root of 615.38 repeating and for that, you should get 24.8070. Finally, the coefficient of variation is what you get when you divide the standard deviation by the average. So if I take the standard deviation that we just found, 24.807, divided by the average of 34.5, multiplied by 100, because we like to express this typically as a percentage and you should get a coefficient of variation of 71.9%. Next, we've asked you to use the same sample to find the five number summary and to determine if there are any outliers. Okay, so there's a few steps here. First of all, the five number summary is the minimum, the maximum, and the three quartiles. So right off the bat, we know the minimum is 17, and the maximum is 89. Now, to find the first quartile, you want to find basically the 25th percentile. So to find the 25th percentile, we're going to take 25%, just 0.25, multiplied by the sample size, which is 10. And that'll give me 2.5. So this gives me the position of the value. 
not the value itself. The answer is not 2.5 here. Now, when you get a decimal number, you should round it to the next. So my 25th percentile is the third value in my sample. So in this case, that would be 18. The 50th percentile, or the second quartile, is also the median. So we already did this. We know the median was right in between 22 and 23, so it's 22.5. And the third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, we're going to take 75%, so 0.75 times the sample size, which is 7.5, round that, and take the next value. So the eighth value in the sample is the 75th percentile, also the third quartile. In this case, that is 44. So we have our five number summary, 17, 18, 22.5, 44, and then 89 for the maximum. Now, as far as determining if there are any outliers, we can use the results that we just found. So what you need to do is calculate what we call the upper and lower limits. So to find the lower limit, I'm going to take my first quartile, so 18, minus one and a half times the interquartile range. That is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. Okay, this is called the interquartile range. So the lower limit is negative 21. Now, of course, there are no values in my sample that are below negative 21. So I have no outliers on the lower end. For the upper limit, I'll take the third quartile, so 44 plus one and a half times the IQR. So 44 minus 18. For this, you should get 83. And we could see that the last value, 89, is outside of that limit, which means 89 is an outlier. The last question is asking you to prove that the sample is not normally distributed using the empirical rule. So for this, we're going to need the average, which we had found earlier as 34.5, and the standard deviation, which we had found before to be 24.807. And the empirical rule states that 68%, approximately 68% of a sample's sample points should be within one standard deviation of the mean. So if I take the mean, 34.5, and I add and subtract one standard deviation, I would find a range of 9.6 to 59.3. Now, if I went to count how many sample points are within that, basically be all of them except for the last two. So all of these. So that's 8 out of 10. That's 80% of the data. So I've disproved the normal distribution by showing that the empirical rule is not respected here. 80% far exceeds 68%. Now, had I found 70%, maybe I could say it's approximately, and then I would probably test two standard deviations and three standard deviations. But here we were able to prove just with one standard deviation that this set is not normally distributed. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it to be useful. If you have any questions of your own or if you found yourself struggling, please leave a comment and I will read it and get back to you as soon as I can.